And hello, welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And mine is Umaru Sanda Amadou. Coming up. Electoral Commission set to hold exhibition exercise at district offices for those who took part in its one-day registration exercise on October 1st. The chief of Achiasi and the Nifahini of Ebuakwa assure NPP of massive support in the December elections as President Akufado has a sword for construction of a 40-bed capacity district hospital. Hey, Mr. President, many people are for the shop. What's it? This is myself. Anyone ever? You see more? I hear more. I'm more. And I do. Go for it, baby. Also. Also coming up in a story of perseverance, we tell you how a 16-year-old girl with spinal defect is making a living from dressmaking and impacting others even without formal training. <laughs> As nearly 2,000 children in Ghana's alleged witch camps are without education, we tell you how one of such underprivileged children is going the extra mile to get educated. If somebody have his farm, then we go help him. Then you, they pay you. Or they give you something to come and give to your grandmother. Yes. Let's bring you details of our stories now. The Electoral Commission says there will be an exhibition exercise at the district offices of the Commission for those who took part in the one-day registration exercise on October 1st. The one-day exhibition exercise will take place on Wednesday, October 7. The Commission is urging applicants to check their names and ensure that they check their names and ensure as well that all the details are correctly captured. We'll move on to that stories and bring you that insight later on. And President Ekufuado says he will personally intervene in securing funds to set up a factory in Achasi in the eastern region. Speaking at the table of the chiefs and people of Achasi after cutting sword for the construction of a 40-bed capacity district hospital, the president said the establishment of the factory will create jobs for residents of the area. One day, one of you, and I want to one of you to say, I know. A young couple for a new boy, a one or a young factory, no baby, and I'm buying so so, and then I want this about the teaching at Piano. Now, I know the matter is already start factory. A baby, I have a do it, I can't cry now, and then buy. So, I want the other, and those who are the man of the Kobe. Now, in the exit bank, and Casa, the only boy, only place one D, one L faction, or a little batch. And now, Casa, who can say, 1992, a chance to be Jina, be Jina. But I am people, a chair, this in there. And this is a process. Meanwhile, the chief of Achiasi has assured President Kufo Ado that and the new patriotic party that the people will vote massively for the MPP in the 2020 elections. Now speaking at Adeba after President Kufo Ado cut short for the construction of a four bed capacity district hospital. He said the people of Achase have been loyal to the MPP since 1992 and will continue to do so. December 7th, decision day. Achase district, Achase constituency. You're going to say, if in 1992, 
I chance see this with you. And I chance see constituency. Now, can you swear to the people? Any MPP, I buy me a fan for that. If you could for a press, anyone in a mabby sinner. And you never have a permit. I sent my casa. What is my casa? You're calling, say. Maybe I say it. You're right outside you for. I'm watching you for a penny. Maybe I'm in here. I'm holding you here. Mr. President, many men pending for the show. What say? This is our seventh. Anyone in the echo? You see more? I hear more. I'm more. The Nado, my friend, by the way, so now you say a chance of constituency. You are short of one constituency. I know the thing you be any who will be any who pray. Now, former President John Dramani Mahama has assured inhabitants of the Western North region that all areas in that region that lack access to mobile connectivity would be covered under the next NDC administration. The flag bearer was speaking at a debate of the chiefs and people of Bopa when he made the promise. According to him, no part of the country deserves to be cut off from communication, which is critical for development at every level. Oka telecommunication, sir. NDC, Abra, Yewa Beimu, Rawlings Abreso, Nami Namiye, Minister of Communications. Ntisa, Mijina Bontia, make us a mobile phone. Ya Abreso, any I shall say, say, yeah, the mobile phone, say, ba. Ntisa, you say, yeah, dear, here, pa, if you say, say, oh, mobile phone, na. Uti Mijina, baby, ya, ayye, we, juma, Abra, want to na, kia, mu, en, ka, say, wo, ko, kuma, say, ako, hu, obi, ansa. Ente ya de hu hia pa ente be bia na na ka se telecom se ni ho no nyame adom ye ba ye be hwe ni ye din fidie na be sisi ho se ne be ya munyi na be ti akasa Let's move away from politics and the story of a 16 year old lady Priscilla Yeboa is one that must motivate others to live beyond reproach now Priscilla suffered a spinal defect at the age of 2 forcing her to drop out of school since she could not walk properly. Now, without any formal training in dressmaking, Priscilla has mastered the skill of making dresses and extended the gesture to other children in the community. She wants public support to buy herself a sewing machine to help her apply her trade. Now, Central Regional Correspondent Calvo Stete has more. Meet 16-year-old Priscilla Yabua, a resident of Gumwa Dominasi in the central region. According to parents of Priscilla Yeboa, she suffered from a spinal defect at the age two, forcing her to drop out of school. Priscilla's condition got worse, forcing her parents to seek medical care at the facility in Aguna, Swedru, but several efforts to get Priscilla back to her old self has yielded no results. Ama Bochi, Priscilla's mother, recounts how her daughter got her condition. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 10 calls on countries to strive to reduce inequality within and among countries by empowering and promoting the social economic and political inclusion of all, including persons with disability. However, Priscilla's situation is a far cry from the SDG goal as she has suffered segregation from childhood till now. Despite dropping out of school as a result of harassment from colleagues, students, Priscilla, who has no formal training in dressmaking, is dexterous. City News learned that Priscilla has taken it upon herself to teach young girls in her neighborhood about her trade. Okay. Nah. 
Akwa de pom school. Pacho Davy. I don't know what she was Pacho Bialanch, a man I made the margin. She is of the firm belief that although she has difficulties in working and has no formal education, she will learn a trade to succeed in life. Uncle of Priscilla Yabua, Ebenezer Kwame Donko, called for support for her niece to help her better her trade of becoming a professional seamstress. She's very wonderful, you know. Uh, I don't know, people like that, God gives them special talents. And so I, I saw that she was able to pleat some hairs. She was able to use her own hands uh, to uh, do some clothes. And so uh, for that matter, uh, we, we saw that this is her God-given uh, talent. So, but we need support for her because uh, she wants to go and better what she's capable of uh, and her innate capability, she wants to do it very well. But what is the take of officials from the Ghana Federation of Disability Organization on Priscilla's condition? Michael Wanda Aibe is the secretary for the association. What you've just said may sound like she's a genius. She has learned it on her own. She's a genius. But why should she learn it on her own? What somebody can mentor her or train her? One could be stigmatization. One could be she's shy. If she's shy, what is making her shy? It's because society refused to accept her. Once society refused to accept her, she will feel shy to go close to people. When you are like that and you have friends who will come to you at home, oh, sister, come, let's go, let's go here. And they take their time for you. You can walk fast. They take their time. They help you walk slowly. Sometimes where there is a ditch, they carry you over it. It encourages you. You know that you have been loved. So you will be encouraged to move out. He, however, called for support from the general public to help Priscilla Yeboa achieve her dream of becoming a seamstress. Society has failed. We are not supposed to sit down and watch it and say that, oh, once a government didn't do it, that is all. Even society, the chief in the community, knowing very well that they have a certain physically challenged person, can even organize the community. Oh, please, we need five bags of cement just because of this our daughter or this our son. Let's do a slow for her so that she can easily access her classroom and not drop out from school. It's a responsibility all of us need to bear in the society. I am here with 16-year-old Priscilla Yaboa. Priscilla suffered a spinal defect, and that has brought some changes in her way of working. Priscilla is calling for financial support from the general public to support her to buy a sewing machine so she could feed for herself and her family and also learn a trade. From Gomwa Dominase, I am Calvis Tete for City News. Interesting one there. Very challenging one too. And um, it's disheartening seeing that. Um, let's pray that things change for her yeah. for the better. Yeah, it's really touching. Okay, we'll move to some other stories and the Sustainable Development Goal 3 talks about ensuring healthy lives and promoting health and well-being for all ages. But it looks like Ghana will have to up its game to achieve this target by 2030. This is because some residents in the Shio Sudoku district of the Greater Accra region are still battling to get access to basic health care. Communities such as Volivo, Kasunya, Nafinya, Aibong, Kewum, Atrobinya, Dofo, among others located within the Shai Osudoku district on daily basis have to struggle or travel long distances to access health care. This is because some of these communities either do not have a health facility at all or even if they did, it is heavily under-resourced. Now, pregnant women and patients have to travel long distances to adjoining communities on motorbikes for health care. Now, our Tema correspondent health is Washington has more. The Shai Osudoku district is the largest in the Greater Accra region in terms of land size. It can be found in the southeastern part of Ghana in the Greater Accra region. It is estimated to have a population of about 64,000. Although the district can boast of a state-of-the-art district hospital situated at Dodoa, 
access to health care delivery at some of the villages within the peripheries of the district continue to be a daily struggle as residents battle with under-resourced and understaffed health facilities. A visit to the area revealed that most communities have no health facilities. The few privileged that did were heavily under-resourced. Nurses who work at some of these facilities dread working at these facilities especially because they are heavily under-resourced, making their work difficult. At the Kasunya Chips compound, for instance, this facility has only one bed to take care of patients and pregnant women who come for delivery. The community nurse here narrates to me how challenging it has been working here for the past seven years. This is a bed that is supposed to be given to women that come to deliver here or maybe someone that is sick. But because we don't have a place to put it, this is where we've placed it so that we can put our, this is uh, ITN, we can put them on and some of the files. Yes. So as it is now, um, where do you um, receive the babies. Um, yes. They are here. Okay. Yes, so now we do all in one room now. The line in and delivery. Everything, everything in, in one room. room. So if there are three patients or three, they will wait. They will wait outside. Mm -hmm. Some of them we do the. Sometimes when they come and then it is a how do you call it a head in perineum. You we have to divide ourselves. One will be doing it outside there. With a we will just block the whole place and then we will do it outside, and then the other ones will be inside. So you mean to say sometimes you take delivery outside? Yes. And um, your dispensary, I can see some, you have some medicines. Yes, there. this is where we keep our medicines, which is not supposed to be. They are all in boxes. These are all medicines that we have lined up here like that. Although the facility has a midwife, she lives in far away Asutari, which is about 15 kilometers away. She added that people prefer to do domiciliary delivery at home rather than delivering at the facility due to the lack of space and conducive environment. Because they saw the situation, most of them will prefer to deliver at home or maybe they'll call the midwife, please, I'm in labor, and then she'll go there. Those who also don't prefer people seeing them that they are delivering, they come here and then do it for them. We want a disposable, the disposal site, an incinerator. Mm, it's, it, because when the midwife delivers them, they have been taking their placenta home. And the rest of their things, she will burn it, which is not supposed, she will do it herself. Eh. From Kasunya, I moved to Volivo, another deprived community which has this chips compound as its only source of healthcare facility. This is a beautiful 10-room chips compound facility, but just like Kasunya, it is equally heavily under-resourced. This facility here takes care of about six communities under its catchment area. Apart from the facility lacking the needed resources to meet the healthcare needs of the people, it comes with two single room attached nurses' bungalows, but is yet to be occupied due to some finishing touches that need to be made. Interestingly, the facility is not connected to electricity, although it has the high tension pole directly on its compound. It has no toilet facility as nurses and patients resort to the bush to ease themselves because this toilet project has been abandoned halfway. Nurses here recounts how working here has been like to City News. Uba Volivo Chips compound a honey ye OPD room and a bed in soon I share um your pregnant women so moba honey ye antenata honey ye OPD a honey ye family planning service be be a ye be be a honey ye stars ye a war a buying brand on my share and why be free baby abano embra and be share because I was like, you post it over her say for so many years. Now, over her baby, I will bet now. What's in it? Yes, what's her cry or what? No, what baby train me through one night. The place is so bushy to the extent, say, it's what they be. I would see a bone thing cry. No, who are come over there? Any man, who are come about five kilometers away from Volivo is this health center, Dofo Health Center. This is the immediate referral health facility within the catchment area. The entire chips compound within the catchment area, including Kasunyang, which is about 25 kilometers away, had to refer patients who needed special health care to this center. Unfortunately, it is also having its fair share of the challenges confronting the other smaller health facilities. The only challenge we have here is the fact that we don't have a vehicle. So sometimes we have to refer clients 
in a critical condition, like a clamsia or something, have to put the client on a Okada before we refer the client to the nearest facility. So, uh, uh, almost a year, a year now, we had a, I had a clamsic patient who was fitting, unconscious. But because of the road and the nature of the, uh, you see the road, uh -huh. so transferring the patient from this place to that place, when the, uh, the patient got to Akusi, she lost the baby. Because of the, the surroundings, we always see scorpions and snakes around. And then it's very threatening. The last time we even saw some around, the, uh, the snake nearly beat us over here. And then the scorpions, they, they are around the facility because of the way the area is. So please, we are pleading on, um, on behalf of the government to help us, especially with the fumigation. Yeah, because of the scorpions and other things. Apart from the challenges, the center has no laboratory, and this very one, which was initiated by the community some seven years ago, has been abandoned. The challenges facing all these health facilities, apart from hindering the smooth healthcare delivery in the area, is having a serious negative impact on residents of these communities. While pregnant women complain they are unable to frequently visit the hospital, some residents also narrate how they struggle to get basic healthcare in the area. Yeah, and I'm your coji, hama, meeting me, me, yeah, dear Jew. That and a big beer for coffee, think, coy, a gamma. A debe, a man to me, I coji to a zeve, caca, a cojinanta, zreka, a gana hamelu. The closest biggest health facilities to these communities is the Astuchari, Bato, and Akuse Hospital. But the distance from these communities to these hospitals is quite a distance away with an average of 40 kilometers. According to residents, all they need is for government to help resource the existing facilities and staffing them accordingly, as this will go a long way to meet their health needs as Ghana strives to meet their sustainable development goals. For City News, my name is Elvis Washington reporting from Kasunya, Shairo Sudoku. Now, residents of Kwesi Kromego Cocoa Farming Community in the Elembele district of the Western Region can now heave a sigh of relief following the commission of a newly built chips compound. The 200,000 Ghana City Modern Community Based Health Planning and Services Compound, funded by the MP Imano Amakofi Boa, replaces an old congested deteriorated chips compound which has a leaking roof. City News is Kwesi Ejenim has more. Kwesi Krum, a major cocoa producing community in the Elembla district, just like its neighbors, has been struggling with healthcare delivery. Due to the unreliable deteriorated chips compound in the community, residents usually work for several hours to places like Christia due to the poor road network to seek healthcare. It is against this backdrop that the member of parliament for Elembele, Imano Amakofibua, personally funded this new chips compound at a cost of 200,000 Ghana cities to replace the dilapidated one. One of the critical challenges here has to do with healthcare. We are talking about a population of over 30,000 in this area alone. And access to healthcare has been a challenge. We had only one chip compound in Edu Suazo. And Edu Suazo, if you are to go there today, it's about two hours. And so it's a struggle to get there. So we began the effort of trying to make sure we get chip centers all over the place. The midwife in charge of the Kwesi Chrome Chips Compound told City News the new facility is a relief for both health personnel and patients. In the old system, we used to combine both male and females together in round room. Pregnant women, delivery mothers, postnatal mothers at the same room. So it was a little challenge for us to take good care of those people at, in one room. At our old facility, the ceiling is not all that good. There's a, a, a hose, there are snakes, a scorpion, a whole lot of things. The chief of Kwesi Chrome and residents who could not hide their joy spoke to CC News. I have my opinion for me. I work on a man, I'm a baby, 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 I'm a baby
Emmanuel Amako Figua also handed over an 11,000 Ghana CDs borehole, which he personally also funded. It's still the city newsroom. When we come back, as nearly 2,000 children in Ghana's alleged witch camps are without education, will tell you one of such underprivileged children is going the extra mile to get educated. Don't worry, we have that and more. Rigworld Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade, Kejibil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejibil, of the Takradi Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. Addictive series for you on DSTV. A country invaded. Another surrender. What will America do? So much has changed. No, you've changed. Go, go, go! Love a good British drama. World on Fire's intimate portrayal of the effects of wartime on ordinary people may be your next favorite thing to watch. Or catch Stargirl, a stellar series around a teenage superhero who is a shining beacon in the darkest of times. True crime fans, you'll be fascinated by this brilliant federal agent as she dives into the dark criminal underworld. And join some of Power's most controversial characters in this spin-off. Series definitely worth checking out on DSTV. Welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now, Ghana's alleged witch camps are home to nearly 2,000 children who live at the various camps with their parents, with the majority of them having no access to formal education due to poverty. But for 14-year-old Kwabena Timothy, who followed his banished grandmother to the Jani witch camp since 2012, absolutely nothing should prevent him from pursuing his life's dream. Correspondent Maxwell Souk traveled to the Yendi municipality and reports. Timothy was barely six years when his grandmother was accused of witchcraft and banished from the Wapuli community in the northern region. But due to the inseparable bond between he and his grandmother, he followed her to the Ngani alleged witches camp. And for eight years, this place has been their abode. His daily life is a struggle as he coupled hustling with education. Timothy works from farm to farm, and the proceeds he makes is where their bread is battered. This teen boy is just one of about 1,000 children living in this camp, according to the camp officials. 
Timothy explains how life has been living in a completely neglected neighborhood. If somebody has his farm, then we go help him. Then you, they pay you? Or they give you something to come and give to your grandmother? Yes. Like, you did, how much can you make? Like, when you go, the thing you do is what they will give you. Okay. So something like this granite they can fetch for you, yes. or maize they can give you some. Yes. There is no accurate data available, but it is estimated that more than 2,000 children are currently living with their parents at the four remaining camps in the northern part of the country. Here comes Timothy's grandmother, Umbe Suhini. She does not remember her age anymore, but for the eight years, Umbe is yet to come to terms with the predicament that she has been forced into as she reflects on her good old days. The Ghani camp is located outskirts of the main community where there is seemingly disconnection of access to amenities including electricity, water and health care. There is no public school here except this one operated by missionary group. This is where Timothy is undergoing his education, but that is not without a challenge, as the determined boy lacks everything, including books, sandals, and school uniforms. He tells me the clothes he's wearing now are his home and away. But unlike any other child growing up, Timothy has his dreams, a dream of becoming a medical professional to save lives, although he doesn't know how that will happen. I'm going to be a doctor. You're sure you want to be a doctor? Yes, I want to help people and treat them. I meet up with the assemblyman for the Ghana electoral area, Sandu Mark, who says despite several appeals for the Yindi Municipal Assembly to extend education to the camp, this is yet to materialize, except the Christian school that isn't free for the children to attend. It's a big challenge. Uh, every day I used to come here, visit them, uh, give them encouragement. But for I being an assembly member, I cannot do anything. So, yeah. Are we asking school for here? Yes, yes. We have appealed to uh, this assembly NGOs to help us get school for them. It's right, uh, recently uh, the, the, the Christians people brought one from KG1 to P6 and they are sold, uh, they are managing with that one. They are private. They have not uh, uh, been, the school has not been taken by uh, government. We have about 1,000 children here. But, uh, yes, 400 are school goers. Yes, over 1,000. And uh, in my distance, uh, 400 children are in the school. Yes. So it means that the other. Other on the hand, they are just there. For now, these children have only one thing to console themselves with the power of divine providence, as that equals through their songs of praise. Jesus love you, come and get. Now, the National Democratic Congress NDC parliamentary candidate for the Brecom East constituency, Simon Apabin Chairman, is optimistic about the NDC's chances of regaining the seat a decade after it was lost to the NPP. City News' Michael Saponfun visited the Brecom East constituency and has this report. One is ushered into Brecom East constituency with paraphernalia of the NPP and NDC on all available electric poles and spaces available. The Brecum East constituency has 26 electoral areas and 113 polling centers. The constituency shares boundaries with four constituencies, namely Brecum West, Sunyani West, Domai East and Tang. Some of the major towns in the constituency are Katu, Biadang, Senasi, Kure No. 1, Namensia, Mpatasi and Mpatapo. One major challenge the constituency has faced over the years 
is bad road network. However, some of the roads are getting a facelift as they are being asphalted. 10 kilometers of roads in the constituency are also expected to be fixed under the Sino Hydro program. The campaign in the Brekum East constituency is heating up by the day. Registered voters in the constituency are 59,032. The battle for the parliamentary seat is between two chairmen, Nelson Chairman of the New Patriotic Party and Simon Ampabin Chairman of the National Democratic Congress. This is the first time the two are facing it off for the parliamentary seat. The MPP has dominated the political scene in the Brekum East constituency since it won the parliamentary seat from the NDC in the year 2000, when Captain Retard and Krabi Fadati defeated the late Jeto Use Champo. Some of the constituents have been sharing their electoral preferences. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, hustlers. A juma, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and who is going to do it? Should be a entire pearlman, nipa, yeah, be so afraid now, bed, or bed boy. Yes, you did to say, Simon Nessin Chiramedia, Utia Manfunina, so fred. Yes, you can't say, I'm a pain and say, or bow, obey the Lazama Prague for your year, Juma. The internet make us say, you be an engine to me, say, me, 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 to me, Prague and a mummy to me, quiet me, you don't want dear, Prague and a mummy to me, you don't want dear, Prague and a mummy to me, you don't want dear, Prague and a mummy to me, you don't want dear, Prague and a mummy to me, because <laughs> Aha, it's me per se, or no, by not, and I do down quite for father so or bar. Mission in Cassaye, ma, or Babu, are you to know? First time now, me who know, no, me who say, did the papa be one more bar, a bit me up, why you to be because they couldn't you to know. Once I didn't wait, maybe I what he say. It's me per se, or no more bar, a bit me up, or mama, or my age. We are looking out for a visionary leader. Anybody who can change the Queen, the Queen situation from scratch to a higher level. And Simon Pabin is the choice. He's the right choice. The two aspirants, Nelson Chemi and Simon Pabin Chemi, have lined their vision for the constituency. I'm going to look at education. Under that, I'm going to make sure that uh, from the basic level, I'm going to equip all the basic schools with the uh, computers so as to help them with their computer literacy. Uh, I'm going to also resource all the senior high schools with the uh, both teaching and learning materials, more than one of course, so as to let them stick to the modern terrain of teaching and learning. Uh, leaving that aside, I'm going to institute a municipal quiz competition among the five senior high schools that we have. Already we have municipal quiz competition for the BEC, uh, sorry, for the junior high schools. I'm going to raise I'm going to strengthen it. I'm going to make it more competitive so that uh, it, will, it will bring that uh, competition. I'm granted opportunity as a member of parliament. Uh, we've discussed issues about health. And when you come to help, uh, I am going to get the people of Brekum a district specialized hospital. They deserve a district special or a specialized hospital. All the way from Asante region up to the uh, northern region, we don't have that specialized hospital. It is just when you are suffering from bones, the orthopedic sections, you go to Dian and that's that selective special, uh, specialist in the various districts. But I want to make sure that. Uh, all the various specialties will be assembled at one hospital called a specialized hospital. That's going to be a referral hospital for the Bono region. And I think my people deserve that. We look forward to get uh, a university campus in Brekum. We look forward to develop the agriculture where I have it as a vision to move into agriculture, commercialization and mechanization. Where we take agriculture from the level of just this peasant level to agriculture, commercialization, industrialization. On job creation, 
we are going to move job creation on the line of uh, uh, industrialization, where this place is a predominantly cocoa growing area, and we are going to use cocoa pulp. It's a, it's a typical cashew growing area. We are going to use cashew, even waste. We are going to use waste to generate jobs. Two of the constituents have been telling City News specific reasons why they will vote for a particular candidate. In fact, from 2016 coming, our rules were very, 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 very bad, very bad. And now you can see as far the rules have been fixed by Nana Adodankwa Akufuado and also Napko. 100,000 uh, unemployment graduates have been recruited and now they are working. At the end of every month, they receive something for their lives and also planting for food and jobs. Now in Ghana, we can also export maize to the nearby uh, countries, the neighboring countries, Cote d'Ivoire and the rest, Togo and the rest. So, and also um, free senior high school. The candidates are optimistic of getting the north to represent the people of Bukum East constituency. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win no less than 65 percent. Even more, I'm trying to be more moderate. You understand? I know I'll win and win massively because the landmarks I have is indelible. In fact, to say the least, and people have disappointed Bekum. And they are so disgruntled that come December 7, they are going to cause a change. And that change is becoming on us. It is just looking at us. It's so clear and it's so clear that come December 7, if there is going to be any constituent that is going to receive the quickest change, it will start from Bekum. From Bekum, I am Michael Saponifum for City News. And in our studio here in Adabraka, in Accra, I am Omaru Sanda Amadu. Vivid Kai, look up. Still ahead on the bulletin, we'll take you to the Morley National Park, where activities seem to be returning to normalcy after it was shut down for COVID-19 reasons. Stay with us, we'll be right back. materials for this building. I can see that. But my brother, you know we just last year you built this house? Oh yeah. When the wall started peel off like banana due to rising dam. My brother, that's been my issue. I've tried so many things but nothing works. You know what? They even use that black rubber thing. Only before the concrete casting. You mean that boiler rubber? Oh. My brother, you would have saved yourself the stress if only you used the squid DPM from Vertigo Limited. Really? That'd be what my puppy used for house. And over so many years, the house still did come up. For purchases and inquiries, contact Ventigio Limited at Spinters Road, Accra, or in Kumasi at Ukumasi Quadras. Vizqueen DPM, no size. Dance the night away with some real funky shows this September on GoTV. And get hip and fabulous with some Niger food to whet your African appetite. Oh, uh, why don't we eat? It's all mind over matter when you upgrade to GoTV Plus or GoTV Max. It takes a brilliant mind to take down an insane street smart criminal. Stay connected or upgrade to GoTV Plus or GoTV Max for access to real groovy shows. We're putting the funk in entertainment. GoTV. Live it. Love it.
And you're welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now, just like many of the country's tourism sites, Ghana's biggest game reserve, the Mole National Park, was closed down to tourists in March this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. After the easing of restrictions, however, the park was open to visitors. In this report, City News' is Richard Fogo has been finding out how activities are picking up at the park. So this is the entrance to the Mole National Park. They closed down in March because of COVID-19. They have since opened to the general public. We are here this morning to find out how things are going. As you can see, they have their vertical buckets and a lady just washed their hands. The temperature is taking. We'll go beyond this gate and find out how things are going here. The Mole National Park is Ghana's largest protected area and covers about 4,577 kilometers square. It is almost entirely located in the Savannah region, with the rest in the northern and upper west regions. The districts that host the park are West Gunja, North Gunja, Solatona Kalba, Wa East, and Mamprugu Maduri districts. The Mole Park has significant biodiversity, aesthetic and cultural values typical of Guinea Savannah ecosystem and best for wildlife viewing in Ghana. The park is a unit of the Forestry Commission under the Ministry of Land and Natural Resources. There are about 742 plant species found in the park, five of which have never been recorded in Ghana outside Muli. There are about 94 mammal species, 33 reptile species, over 300 species of birds, 9 amphibian species, and 120 species of butterflies in the park. The park is a destination for thousands of domestic and foreign tourists. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the park was closed in March this year. Although the park has been reopened after the easing of restrictions, patronage is yet to fully pick up. The busy scenes at the park, especially on weekends like this, is currently missing. And even the baboons and calves that usually welcome people at the information center seem to be on break. This is the information center at the park. Usually here, it's very busy. All visitors who wish to go on safari and experience the park start their visit here, where they are educated and told what to expect. As you can see, the tour guard seems to have nothing doing. Before COVID and the closure of the park, you will not find them sitting like this. They're usually begging for time to rest. Today does appear they are begging for visitors to take around the park. We'll find out how the experience is from that time and now. The last time I was here, uh, I didn't see this kind of rest from you and your colleagues. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, it's true. Uh, because of the COVID, mm. you know, this is actually the business has come down. Mm. Tourists are no more coming. That is why we realized that this morning we are just sitting down relaxing. Mm. Myself and my other colleagues and the drivers, no job for us. Uh, formerly, before the COVID, there was, the place used to be busy, especially weekends. Mm. But today being Saturday, no, even up to now, no single guest has come yet. Mm. So which we believe is the COVID. Mm. That is why people are not coming. Yeah, but, but, but you have opened. Oh yeah, we opened um, since um, last month, August. Mm. And um, for the past weeks, there were some few people that were coming. Mm. But since last week up to date, it has uh, ceased down again. Mm. But we are hoping that people will still come. A tourist who made her way into the park spoke to City News. I've never seen an elephant before. This is my first time of seeing it. Okay. So today I'm so excited. And are you not scared too? Oh, I'm guys. walking with the, uh, the guy. Yeah. So though. I fear, but not all that. I know there are people here to protect me. Bonachire is an assistant park manager at Mole. Before COVID, on the average, how many visitors were you uh, receiving a day? 
Indeed, by the close of last year, uh, we had received over 18,000 visitors, an average of probably about 2,500 monthly, which uh, was good for, mm. for, for, for the park and for what we do. Uh, but since we reopened, um, indeed, visitors have been trickling in, um, but not as uh, we are experiencing you know, before. The low patronage has taken a toll on private accommodation operators. The Mole Motel and Zena Lodge, as well as transport operators. Since the closure and then the reopening, as of now, it's just only, um, let me say, one third of our staff who are back to work. The other two thirds are still at home, hoping that uh, businesses will improve and we'll have them to recall them back. Um, for now, even for the lodge, unfortunately, we're not able to operate all our 25 rooms. We're operating only one wing, which is just about 18 rooms. The rest of the 12 rooms are still closed as at now because um, the patronage is not that good to be able to occupy all the 25 rooms. We have resumed operations, mm. but not at full capacity yet. Mm. And uh, most of the staff are not yet working also because we are not receiving as much guests as we usually do due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But we have put in place uh, measures to be able to protect guests that will be here. As you can see, the place has been disinfected by, uh, by Zoom Lion. We have a, a place you can wash your hand. There's water everywhere. We insist that uh, guests wear their masks. We have uh, sanitizers around. So we are not occupied very much, but we are open and ready for business. For many visitors to the Mole Park, the most common animal they expect to see are elephants. Elephants in the wild can live up to 60 to 70 years. That is their lifespan. And the gestation period is 22 months. That is to say when the female is pregnant, it carries the pregnancy close to two years before they deliver. And most of the time they give birth to one at a time, one child at a time. And the elephants are herbivores. They feed on only plants, leaves, grass, and sometimes fruit. They are, no, uh, they are more or less like vegetarian. So um, one thing about the elephant, they have a good memory. They are able to remember things and they have poor sight, but they can smell objects from far. This is part of the experience we get here at the Mole National Park. We just came here to see how things are going. It is open to everybody and it is safe for everybody as well. As you can see, the toggers here are up and ready to protect you from the animals. So come and experience nature. From the Mole National Park, I am Richard Fogo for City News. Here in Accra, my name is Vivian Kai Loco. And I'm here with Vivian, who hasn't <laughs> been to the Mole National Park. I've been to the Mole You have? Yeah, Heritage Caravan. Have you touched an elephant? Oh, I, I, I have this beautiful picture of elephants at the back. Oh, really? I'll show it to you. But wait, and, and, Yeah, and I did the hike and everything. I've been to Mole. But it's an election year. If you show it, just issue a disclaimer <laughs> under there. You can, I know. I or know put an emoji of that. an umbrella near the elephant so that you don't <laughs> So I'll wait next year. No, no, put it there, but you no, put no, a no, small no, emoji of I know about that. Next year. Well, that's it for this edition of the City Newsroom. Log on to our website. We have more stories there. You can also subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from CityTV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and keep updated on the go. Watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and Go TV channel 182. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And my name is Umaru Sandamada. Thank you for watching.